Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. We created this sort of frosted glass background a few videos ago and it's got a little parallax image in the background. We've had a lot of questions. We also did this blur on hover one. People have been asking about background, so I'm going to do a quick video today about the background options you get with Divi. And there's plenty of them. So let's enable the Visual Builder. I'm going to go down and create a new section and that's what I'll use to demonstrate these today. Little blue button there to add a section. I'm going to make it a regular section. Just so that we've got something to look at in our section, I'm going to put a single row in there and I'll pop a blurb module in there with a little icon perhaps. I'll leave the title text just as it is. I'm just going to pop a simple icon in there like I say, just so we've got something to look at. Let's pop that text in the middle. Okay, there's a basic section, the blue tab. Inside we've got the row, a green tab. And inside the row, I've got a single column with a module in it. This one's a blurb module, the dark tab. Now the backgrounds that I'm gonna show you today are available in the module, the row, and the section. I'm going to work on the section. So let's go into the section. First tab's content. You'll always find background under the content up there. If you click on the background, it'll expand. We've got color, gradient, background image, background video, background pattern, or background mask. And you can combine colors, gradients and image together and I'll demonstrate that in a minute. So the first one's a color that's pretty explanatory. You put in any color you want. Once you've selected a color or even before you'll see three little dots below the first one there. If you click on it it'll give you a color palette and you can select whatever color you want from there also. If you decide you want to get rid of that color simply go up click on the background color again and hit the trash can that'll get rid of it. You can also click on the field put in a hex code or RGBA and put in your color that way. Let's get rid of this and move on to the gradients. Next up we have background gradients. So I'm going to hit the plus to add a background gradient. By default it puts in two stops with a blue and a green. You can get some fantastic effects. They've just upped their game with this. To add a new stop just pop in left click wherever you want to put your new stop. Click on it again to add the color that you want to put in there. And you can get some fantastic effects by moving things around. And you can add as many stops as you want. Again, click on it to change the color. If we roll down, we've got a linear gradient at the moment. That means it's rolling in a line. There's various different options. You can do circular. You've got the option to center it top left, top right. Put the circle where you want to to get some fantastic effects like that. We've got elliptical. And again, at the moment, I've got that on the top right. Let's pop it into the center so you can see the effect a bit better. Like I say, I've just thrown colors in there. If you put a bit of thought into it, you can get some fantastic effects going on. You can repeat the gradient. You can make it into percentages. If we've got a background image going on, and I'll demonstrate this later on, um, you can blend images and colors and images and gradients and get some fantastic effects. Like I say, I'll demonstrate that when we're in the images. But if I just change this back, and we've also got conical, and you can get some fantastic effects by changing the direction and position. Again, I've kind of thrown this all together, so it's pretty random what you're seeing here, but it gives you the idea of what you can actually achieve with it. Let's put this back as it was. Okay, and mine, one of my favorite things to do is just to use three stops. You can remove it by right clicking. And I'll right click on this one. And let's make that blue a lot darker. 
I'm going to change this back to a linear gradient. And I want the direction to be normal. And with Divi modules, if you change something, you don't like what you've done, simply go in there, delete it. It'll go back to the default. And we can bring these stops up. And get some amazing effects that way. Great. And again, if you decide you don't want a gradient on there, a little trash can, we can get rid of it. Okay, next up, we've got background image. That's fairly explanatory. Let's choose an image. Because of the shape of what we got, I'm going to use a landscape type image. Pop that in there. There it is, great. I'll skip over parallax. I'll come back to that in a minute. Background image size, you can have it cover. You can have it fit. And what it's doing is fitting the height of the image right there. You can have it the actual size of the image. Stretch to fill, which makes them look a bit funny, but for certain images, that's going to work well. And custom size, you can choose to make image whatever custom size you like. I'm going to pop that back to cover. Now you can decide where you want it. We're in the center of the image. Let's put it at the top and see if we can get their heads. Top center. That's okay. Missing a bit out there. So you can decide what bit you want to display. Let's put it back to the center again so we've got the sort of bodies in there. Okay, well, what I'm going to do is, I'll, because we've got parallax off, and like I say, I'll explain parallax in a minute, we can blend. And that's what I was saying before. We can blend colors or gradients. So what I need to do is go back in there, and we'll do this with a color, just for simplicity today. Go into background color. I'm going to put a purple in there. If we go back to our image now, making sure that parallax is actually off, let's go down to our blend. And you can multiply, and what that will do is multiply the purple with our image there. And this is great for offsetting stuff so you can read it by making colors. And they've got some absolutely wonderful features here. I'll go through a couple, screen, overlay. And remember, it's working on that simple color. And you can do this with a gradient also. Darken, lighten. And down here, we've got some like difference and exclusion. They'll give you some fantastic effects. They've also got one down at the bottom. I quite often use is luminosity. And of course, because I put that crazy little blurb module in there, let's just turn the writing, writing white on there so we can actually see it. There we go. By blending colors and images, you can make your modules stand out on top. And remember, this these are all available also on any row or any module. Okay, well, let's go back into our section now. And we'll put a little video background in there. Content, back down to background again. Let's get rid of the color. Let's get rid of the image. Now we can't see our writing because it's white on white. Let's go over to pexels.com and get a little video. Anybody that doesn't know, pexels.com is a fantastic free stock photo and video site. I want a video. If you roll over one, it'll show you what the video is going to do there. Let's find perhaps a beach or something. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Something like this, something with a bit of movement in there. Let's go for this one. I think I've used it before, actually. Just hit the little download button and it'll download it. I'm using Google Chrome, so it downloads it to my browser here. Obviously, whatever browser you're using, you'll have to navigate to your download default download location to find that file. OK, well, let's go back now. Here's a background video. I'm going to hit add background video. And we'll pop it up into my library here. And upload the video. Now 
and there it is that's working perfectly you may see it stagger because I've got my screen recording software running at the moment but that'll work perfectly now it used to be you would really want to upload a WebM version of it but MP4 is pretty universal at the moment so it's going to work on pretty much all browsers. If you need to you can specify a custom background video width and height. You can pause it when another video plays and pause it when it's not in view. That's always a good idea because you don't want it taking up server resources when it's not in view. Okay moving on we've got background patterns and we can combine background patterns and masks with any of these previous ones. So let's pop, pop a little background pattern in there. I'm going to choose this one. By default it puts polka dots in there. I'm not sure if you can see those at the moment. Let's make them white so you can see them. And you can go down, you can flip it around. You can actually do it the other way around so that the video is actually on the polka dots rather than the background there popping back you can make it actual size cover fit stretch fill custom size which I quite often do and you can give it a width and a height do whatever you want with it it's kind of making my eyes go a little bit funny let's find a little different pattern not sure that it was a good idea doing it over a video I'm gonna put a little mesh in there there we go let's take that down in size I'm going to go up and click on the color. I'm going to take the opacity down a bit so it's there but not in your face quite as much. So it's just a little sort of background mesh going on there giving it a bit of texture. I think for distraction purposes I'm going to get rid of that video and we'll put a little image back in there. Pop something with a bit of color in there. There we go, a little less distracting. As you can see, you've got that little textured mesh type thing in the background there. Next up, we've got background masks. And this is where you can sort of cut off sections of your background there. So if we roll down, add a background mask. We've still got our mesh and our image in there, but we've got these various different shapes that we can use over here. If I click on this, go through a couple you can get some really nice effects obviously you want to adjust your module so you can read it over the top but if we go down you can change the mask color background color there I could have a black background on it so my little module stands out there but you can also mask transform like on the other one you can flip it left to right up and down you can turn it around if you want to you can do the opposite, so you've got the black bits in the middle, same as we did with the pattern just now. I'm going to pop those all back how they were. And you can change the aspect ratio if you want to with these, which is not a bad idea for sort of desktop, tablet, mobile. You can make it stretch to fill, cover, fit, which will go from top to bottom right there. I'm not sure I like that too much. Or you can create a custom size if you want to. I'm going to put mine back on stretch to fill. And you've got a blend mode here as well. Color burn, hard light, soft light, different exclusion, hue, saturation, color. Same as we had before for the luminosities and things like that. So there we've combined a, black, a background color, a background image, a background pattern and a background mask there. Okay, let's quickly go back to our images and we'll demonstrate the parallax image effect. So again, in my content, I'm gonna get rid of the mask. I'm gonna get rid of the pattern. And we're just left with an image there. If we click on the image and roll down, this time I'm actually gonna use a parallax effect, making sure that we've got no blend mode in there. Cause usually with parallax, if you've got a blend mode, it's not gonna work with both of them. We've got two options for parallax. We've got true parallax. If I roll up and down, you should see the background image here moving at a different rate than I'm scrolling up and down the site. And again, because of my screen recording software, that might be looking a little glitchy. 
but it's actually pretty smooth and works well. That's true parallax there, with the background moving at a different rate than the foreground. They've also got another version that's called CSS. If we look at the image now, you'll see it's changed. And if I roll up and down the site, that background image is going to stay static as we roll up the site. You see it's staying fixed in the background. With HTML, you do this with a fixed background, but they're calling it CSS Parallax in Divi. And that's a very, very dramatic effect. If people are rolling up and down your site, that's going to get their eyeballs on it pretty quickly. So there we have it guys, there's a quick overview of the background options. And don't forget, you've got all these options, not only in your sections, you can go and do it in your row. And it's always going to be under content and then background, same options. And you can also do it in any module you want, if we go in there, content, background, same options. So you can get some really eye catching effects going on with a little bit of work. So let's save our changes. And I'll X out of the Visual Builder. And there's our little section down below with that fixed background there. So there you go guys, there's a little overview for you of the options you've got with your backgrounds in the Divi theme. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. Don't forget if you've got any questions, drop them down below. I'll do my best to answer them or make a demo video for you. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and WebDesignTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.